Hello, I'm back talking about my favorite topic, hardnesses. Now, in the first video, I briefly mentioned several of the critical structures that are there in the neck. And today I want to do a deep dive on one of them, the trachea or the windpipe. Now, as the name suggests, you probably already know that the windpipe is a structure that carries oxygen or more accurately air from the outside world into the body, into the lungs, and then it gets distributed to the other parts of the body through the blood. Uh, and we all know how critical that is, and we all know how much of a damage can happen to an individual if this airflow is restricted in any way. Now, this part you already know. What I do want to talk a little bit about is the material that this structure, the trachea, is made of. It's not made of bone or muscle. If it were made of bone, then that would be a hard structure. And so putting a collar around the neck and yanking on it would not really hurt it that much, within reasonable limits. And if it was muscle, muscle does damage. If you actually sort of use something to pull like that, it will damage. Uh, but uh, it is quite elastic, so um, it can bounce back to, uh, to a great extent to its original shape. Um, it, it, there, there will be certain amount of damage and I'll talk about that in a later video as well, but it still has the ability to return back to its original shape to some extent. The trachea on the other hand is made of a combination, there's a little bit of muscle but it's made of a combination of other materials like cartilage and so that gives it a fairly unique property in that it doesn't actually bounce back to shape. It, it, can get mechanically damaged, but doesn't actually bounce back to shape always. Um, so think of a drinking straw, not one of those kind of twisty, bendy ones, but a regular plastic straw, the old school straws. Um, it's not hard. It's not like a steel or a bamboo straw. Uh, and it's not like a foam straw that will bounce back. But if you kind of bend it, um, it kind of maintains that, retains that crease. So you could straighten it back up again, but it's likely to bend again and it's likely to constrict the flow of what, uh, liquid or air or whatever uh, through it. So uh, it's not very accurate, but I'm trying to paint a picture of how the trachea actually functions. So that's what can happen to a trachea if yanked on very hard or uh, over a prolonged period of time. And it does uh, damage easily. There, there is scope for it damaging easily because it's right there. You can feel it. And it, <clears throat> if you start pushing it in, you can actually feel it. Uh, you can feel the discomfort for good reason. Uh, there's a reason why this area starts feeling very uncomfortable very quickly if you push in because of all these critical structures. And it's the same for the dog's neck. It's the same for most mammals that have a neck. And the last I checked, dog as a mammal so you can actually feel it on your dog too though your dog is probably not going to like it so don't do it because it does cause discomfort for good reason uh, so probably a better way to verify what i'm saying is to look at anatomy textbooks and see where the trachea sits or you can check it out in my book too i have a diagram that shows it to you um, and it's right there and you, it's likely that you've actually experienced this you've probably seen this in dogs or more accurately heard it uh, in fact, this uh, dog that's very close to my house uh, and he's walked on one of those choke collars uh, with leash correction and I can hear it. There's this labored breathing that kind of the typical sound of air passing through a constrictive passage. Sometimes there's even a whistle at the end of it. Uh, that's a very, very typical of air passaging through, uh, air moving through a constricted passage. So it can damage quite easily too. So what happens if the trachea is damaged? Well, uh, it could be something as serious as instant death. Uh, not, not in all cases, but that can happen. Um, we do hear about it sometimes in the news, particularly uh, in the US where they have these large pet shops and they have trainers there who use uh, collar corrections and leash corrections. And we hear in the news that a dog uh, went back after a training session and died or died during the training session. So uh, that could happen, it could be immediate death. Uh, but even if you sort of park aside those extreme cases, uh, once you start damaging the trachea, it's really a matter of uh, when, rarely do we stop with one yank or pull, right? We're likely to do it again and again. So it's really a matter of uh, when is that last final pull that can make the trachea completely collapse. Um, 
So it could be a matter of a few hours, uh, days, sometimes years, but you're basically on borrowed time once you start damaging the trachea. Now, even if you're not talking about a uh, uh, something as severe as death, uh, we are talking about a constricted passage, which means that there is reduced airflow into the body, and that is going to have a cascade of effect on the body. Uh, this is something that we are all painfully aware of these days: is uh, the role of uh, air or oxygen in sustaining life itself. And for these reasons, for me, the use of a collar, even one single pull is not something I'm okay with for my dogs. There is a reason why we don't wear a seatbelt around our neck or carry babies by the neck or uh, hold our friends by the neck and pull because it is uh, that vulnerable uh, and it is something that can cause irreversible permanent damage and not always easy to tie back to the instant where there was that pressure. With us, we can tell, we can tie the cause and effect, but with dogs, we can't always tell. And I've seen a lot of pet parents not really realizing that they're damaging the trachea, even when they hear that sort of wheezing or whistling sound. Um, so it's very hard for us to tie it back to what has happened. And very rarely um, do we know what to do about it. Do we know that this has happened? And even if we do, um, it's highly unlikely we can do anything about it. It's uh, really irreversible. So this is the reason why I insist on harnesses. I might use a collar to put a name tag on my dog, but definitely not to walk a dog, definitely not to pull, definitely not if there's a chance that my dog can bolt and create the tension um, or that I might panic and pull back. We live in the real life, these things can happen uh, um, and I do not want it to lead to further damage. Safety equipment shouldn't be something that uh, causes more damage than helping us. Uh, and therefore, our seat belts go around our chest and our harness goes around the chest. These are safer areas uh, to put safety equipment on. There are other critical structures in the neck and I will be discussing them in detail in other videos. But if you have specific questions on the trachea or the windpipe, or harnesses and collars in general, send them along. I will try my best to answer them through videos or through messages.